basically what it does is like you have food in it and and it spins it has a gears at the bottom and that rotates the little plate that you have in it and so and then there's little burners on the side so those little holes that are poked out the heat comes in and the heats the food the reason why it's turning is so it can heat faster and it has a timer or whatever <laughs> right Thank you very much. It's supposed to like cook from the outside in. Something that's, like the heat start. that's why it's daughter. That's why it's not aptitude. And that's why I'm calling everybody together. It's never been aptitude. You feel me? Okay. It's always attitude. Oh! That's sort of a sidebar. Yeah, that was a sidebar. Um, but thank you so very much for that. Put that cup down. Thank you very much for that. How does that happen? Because we don't see what you're talking about is the heat that heats. Where does that come from? How does that come about? Oh, see the heat. There's burners on the side. Right. And when it's plugged into the wall, electricity um, like doesn't heat the burners, but there's something that is. Right. And that's just something in which I'm looking for. However, even though you may not know all, you got a good part of the details, but even though you may not have all of them, you still use it? Hmm? How many know all the intricate parts of a cell phone and how it's used and what goes into it and how it actually works? <laughs> Give the adults a chance to answer, you'll embarrass them. <laughs> Does any, 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 anybody else know? You're not, you're not, yeah, you're not, you know how a cell phone works? Oh, like the basics. I don't know, like all those little chips and things that are in there. Mm -hmm. But I know for mine that I took apart when it got wet. Like you have the battery, which you have the battery which powers it, and you charge that to keep it on. And then the way in which the service actually then, where you, if it's valid, you have your little memory card or SIM card that's connected to the company. Does it work when I press <coughs> to call? Yeah. How and why does that? I don't care as long as it works. Wait, you don't care. You don't. You, <laughs> but even though, as long as it works. even though my point is, there are many things in life you don't know how it works, but you still use. Is that correct? That is correct. You, you don't. You don't really know why it goes like that. You don't know the 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 process is called irradiation um, through a microwave. There's three, four, three ways in which um, power or energy is is conducted. And you either have conduction, convection, or radiation. Microwaves use a slight form of radiation in order to heat the food, as you said, brother, from the from the outside in. That's why it's usually so hot on the bottom, but still maybe kind of cold if you don't fully heat it through. But there's a process, but in actuality, you're not interested in the process. All you want to do is when you hit start, that thing heats up your food and you can take it out. All you want to know is when you flip open that phone, is that when you press that thing, you can either get a, you know, send a call or receive a call, sister. But there's some molecule changes that happen both in the microwave and in the cell phone that's not healthy. Correct. But that's not important to, to the individual because knowing that, most individuals, because they still use it. Some have taken a wrapping the towel around their head and they'll use it then to, to try to block. The thing is, even if you knew all the intricate parts of using it, that's not really important. The very fact is that you can use it is what's important to you and that it has a value of use to you. So majority of the world, it has a value of use to you because cell phones provide a, a quick service that you didn't have 50 years ago. 50 years is only a short time. Isn't it important to know how they got to that place and how it affects you? No. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you why the Bible, what the Bible says about that in just a minute. Okay. Because people take the same stance about God. Mm -hmm. It ain't important that you know how God works. That's right. It ain't important that you know how God works. That's right. Yeah. And many times, part of covetousness, which is a sin, by the way, before the living God. Covetousness is seeking God's knowledge about things that he has no intention of giving you right now. This is why Paul said, now we look into a glass darkly. Because we only see certain things from this plane. But you ain't get, or you haven't gotten the full reception of knowledge. 
And that's, how, that, that's why you don't work. But many people concentrate on how God works instead of the fact that he works. And they can't even handle it. So is the problem most of with people is that they feel like Fine. they not so much need the problem. Okay, I see the problem is needing to know or thinking they need to know how God works. Mm -hmm. But isn't there a problem with someone who really feels that they would understand why God does what He does? It, it's it, it, not only why and how um, and the reasons behind it, but in thinking, the Bible speaks of itself that your thoughts ain't His thoughts. You your ways think, ain't His ways. You think you're equal. It's different. It's different he as the measurement him. between earth and heaven <laughs> is how we are with all my. He ain't studying about what we're thinking about each other. That's the, that's the stuff is not even, it, 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 it has no bearing on his greatness. The great thing about understanding the faith as it is, is that once we get, and once we understand, it's not about us. It's not about how great we are, but how great he is. It's not based on, that's why those who refuse the covenant of grace or the understanding and dispensation of grace miss under the law. Because the Bible teaches that through the law we knew sin. And then we tried to fix it on our own. That was never God's plan. God's plan was to show you who you are in, in his statutes and how you missed the mark. So that's why it's always called the law of Moses. You never hear them say the law of God. This is the law of Moses brought about. Yes, God brought it about to give the Israelites a structure, but that wasn't what going to fix them. Why? Because they can't be fixed. <laughs> the problem with us, it, it, we think that we can be fixed. Here, here we go one further. We try to fix ourselves. <laughs> oh, my goodness. A broken thing with, with broken tools tries to fix the broken thing. How that work? How does that work? And if it does work, it don't work very well. You go into anybody in repairman you have, and he come inside your house, and you look at his tools. The, the driver don't work because he ain't got no power. The, 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 his pliers is only off on one hand. He got a screwdriver that's broken on the end. And he say, I come to repair you. I know you with what? <laughs> with these bag of broken tools. You, you yeah, hello? Yeah, is this Angie's list? Yeah, could you send somebody <laughs> over that know what they're doing, please? Because you know already. You don't have to know nothing about the tools. You already have to know nothing about the problem. But you know they're not qualified to fix this. This is how God looks at us. He knows you ain't qualified to fix the very problem, which is us. And that's the one thing that man does not want to look at. Yo, it's about us. It ain't about him. Turn to the book of Colossians, please. And go to chapter 2. Look at the you know what? This I'm going to you know. I'm going to start out in chapter 1. Please read along with me. Colossians. Colossians, chapter 2. I'm going to start in verse 1. I will read it. Y'all follow along with me in the script, please. Colossians, chapter 2. Starting in verse 1. If I want you to know, this is Paul talking. As you can tell in chapter 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, who are in Colossae. Okay? In chapter 2, starting in verse 1, For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Paul had been away from them for a long time, and some of them knew about him, but others didn't newly baptized, the new converts, they didn't know about it. So that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. Even 2,000 years ago, people had a trouble at getting a handle on this. The Laodiceans were influenced by the Greeks around them. And the Greeks had a great stumbling block because they always sought to know. 
to know. This is why many of them at that time and day became agnostics. And agnostics is, is one who recognizes that there is, but you, you, can't, you can't really know. You can't really know. Uh, verse 3. In whom are hidden all the treasures. It's talking about both of the falling of Christ. Verse 3. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted, listen to that, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Here where we come in. Beware. Beware. Lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not, and not according to Christ. Break it down. For in him, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bottom. In Christ, when he walked the earth, is all the embodiment of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. This, the Greeks, the Romans, the people there, even the Jews themselves, those who were the last of the Hebrews and the Israelites there, all those walking, do not understand that the embodiment of Christ on earth it's the representation of the Godhead in completeness. And they can't get that. So they went with philosophy. They went with tradition. They went with education. They went with every other form of worldly wisdom. And not understanding that you get this through the faith and belief in Christ. You ain't got to understand it to know that it works. Matter of fact, Praise your God. seeking to understand it prevents you from knowing that it works. Because the Bible says you never come to Christ. It don't say you come, come to Christ by knowledge. It says you come to the understanding of Christ through faith. You don't need no knowledge about it. You just need to have the faith that it is so. Just like when you go to that microwave and you put that food in and you close the door, all you do is press the timer and start. You ain't walked away and asked yourself, now I wonder if the irradiation of the rest of the process there, then heats the food at milliseconds or microseconds. And if it does hit the milliseconds, how many times should I then put on to use the... You could care less about that. All you waiting for is ding. My food's ready. And you take it out. You didn't ask yourself. You don't even know who the inventor of the microwave is. Do you? Uh-huh. That's what I thought. You got no understand. Unless you Google it. You understand who the inventor is, nor could you care. You some Japanese guy, Pastor. <laughs> okay. All right. That's what, that's, all you want to know is, I put my food in there, press start, will it work? Yeah. Okay. All you want to know is, does Christ work? Does he work? Let's go on. You ain't the only, people ain't the only one in, in this, this segment of time who have had this problem. They want to know why, where, for, and how. And they miss the basic points and they miss the... And it's elementary, my dear Watsons. All very elementary. Let's go on. Verse 10. And you... Listen to this. See? And you, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. You mean it's not the governments of the world, Pastor? Heck to the no. You mean it's not... Barak, no. It's not the king of, no. He is the head of all principality, and all power is in him. These men are just marking time. This is marking time. Who you saw in power 50 years ago, let me ask you, they in power today? No. Remnants of their family that you know about. Some of the power families in America, but the men who headed that power, they ain't here. They not here, they laying in their grave, and they ain't getting up some ain't going to get up on judgment there, because the Bible teaches that. Some ain't getting up at all. They just going to stay, rotting away in there. But those who believe, not wonder about how it works. Those who believe, those who believe according to the faith, yo, you getting up. In him, you were also, verse 11, in him, you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. 
Now you all know the process of circumcision, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But by putting off the body, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, talking about all of us, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. The law and the understanding of the law prevented men from really fully having God. They were seeking to understand, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. How about a thou shalt I can? The thou shalt I can comes through Christ. He is the one who circumcised the flesh because we could not do it. Praise God. Still today, can't do it. You'll be waiting to them. They, they be God. Listen, they could go to as many classes. They could go to as many seminars. They could go, they could go. They can't get this by knowledge. You'll never be able to get it by knowledge. If your faith ain't in it, you're going to miss it because what a thing was done has no reason. Why would God? Listen, 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 listen. I know how great all of us think that we are. I, I get that part. I know how full of ourselves we believe our own press releases. I got that. I got that. I ain't mad at you about it. But even, even in your greatest, your greatest arrogance about yourself, please tell me why God would die for you. I know that. Even in the greatest of our pride. Why on earth would God die? Listen, we ain't talking about Joe Willie down the street. We ain't talking about Robbie Bobo up the block. We talking about the true and the living most high God. You understand when the Israelites gave him that phrase? You understand the power of what the Bible says? When Christ, I am. Huh? When Moses found him. When, Mo, when he brought Moses to him. Now Moses ain't know what he was going through. When he saw that bush itself burning but not consumed. After all was given to him. After it was presented towards him. And he said, oh, who should I say sent me? God says, say, I am has sent you. <coughs> nah, nah, dude. No, no, what's your name? What's your name? I'm really saying, what's your, what's your name? Your name Jesse or somebody? What's your name? You got a name? Yeah. Tell them. I am has sent you. And that name of power that he went back to the Hebrews when they believed Moses on the street because nobody had heard for years God used the power of that name. So when he went back and they questioned him and they said, who sent you to tell us this, Moses? He said to tell you, I am. They fell back. They fell back. Fast forward that. When they came to get Christ, when he was coming out of the garden and they came to get him, the Romans asked him, said, what are, who have you come for? And he said, we have come for Jesus of Nazareth. Yeshua of Nazareth, we have come for. And he said, I am he. When he said, I am, the power of the words made the Romans fall back. He never raised a hand. He never raised his voice. He never threatened them in any way. He said, I am. And the Bible says that they fell back on the strength of those words alone. Were afraid to come up and to grab him. And when you seen the police, afraid to come up and grab a brother. <laughs> Y'all need to stop playing with me. Huh? And then there was many of them. Many of them. And they all fell back. Scared to go up next to them. Mm. People got problem with that, even today. And you say, I am the way, I am the truth. I'm the only way. When the Bible talks about there's no other way to make this journey except through Christ. People got a problem with that. They had, this ain't the first. They not only had a problem yesterday, they still got a problem today. Why? Because they trying to compartmentalize. They trying to put it in a way, they want to put it in a niche, in a notch. They want to put it on a shelf that they have with their own reasoning and understanding. Because in their own arrogance, even they can't understand why God would die for them. 
When you look at yourself, when you look at ourselves with a microscope that is not lying to self, you can see there's no earthly reason and no heavenly reason except for his reason alone that he would pick us to die for, to show forth his power. So when you run up against people that our Bible says, ever seeking, ever on his path, never understanding. Never, never, never understanding the power and the might of Almighty God. It goes to show you, you can't do this by no worldly means. You got to put aside all your education. You got to put aside all your great experience in life. You got to put aside all your great reasoning process there and hang on in faith to the power and majesty of Almighty God through Christ. And this is a world, my family, ain't willing to do that. They've got so many schools. And so, yeah, you didn't think they had no schools back then? Man, please. They had the schools of Alexandria. They had the schools that came out of they had same schools that are in vogue today. They had schools on top of schools Plato, on top of Socrates. schools. Everybody yeah. was around, got a philosophy and a doctrine. Mm -hmm. Everybody got a wind of understanding that's passing through. They rising on this and moving on that. Ain't none of them chose to die for you. Mm. Show me where Plato elected to die for you. <laughs> Show me where the great mighty one caught you. I don't even like to say his name because it makes me flash forward, but I'm going to say it for this. Emotep. <laughs> show me, show me where he died for you. It ain't in the scriptures. Show me where Socrates, Aristotle. Show me where he died for you. Show me where he came out of his own mouth and died for you. Show me where any of these 20th century thinkers died for you. Well, Pastor, didn't, didn't the, the ones who fought in the Civil War, different story. Fighting for civil rights is quite different from fighting for divine recognition and acceptance, which you could not get, which we cannot get on our own. No way, no how. And yet God, in his mercy and glory, did this thing for us. So, having wiped out, in verse 14 again, the handwriting of requirements, and it's talking about the Decalogue. The Decalogue is the Ten Commandments. It's talking about the Decalogue that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. So he took the law and nailed it to the cross. Well, Pastor, that don't mean that the thou shouts don't count. Hey, thou shouts count, but they don't count because they're written. They're on paper or in stone, but because they're written on your heart. Mm -hmm. The change of Christ occurs to you as what we first looked at, as you walk in him. Now, I ain't going to lie to y'all and say I don't have, I don't want to hurt people like I once did. I got no need to. Still don't step on my foot and think of the stadium all day and I won't look at you. You got another thing coming. I ain't quite got a hold of that smite me on one cheek and I'll turn the other. Smite me on one and my left hook you. Until, until my wife says, Neville, and I, I remember now who I'm called to be. And I, 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 I ask your forgiveness for what I just did when I picked you up from the floor. I ain't got that, but I'm getting it. Nobody's asking you to get this up because it ain't about you. I'm trying to fix yourself. Uh -uh. You walk in this. You walk in this here. Little things will drop off them. You don't want to curse. You don't want to express yourself like right, that no more. Right. You don't want to lust like that no more. You're the perversions in our own minds. You don't want to, you don't want to predicate no more. You don't want to bring about no more. Huh? And this is the thing that has changed in the faith. I heard one of the men I listened to on Sunday morning, Apostle Hinton, and, and, and you've heard me say this before. They've taken away the old time. They did. Preachers won't even talk about sin and repentance no more. They don't want to talk about hellfire because it's not popular. Dang what's popular with the world. You better get on what's popular with Almighty God. That's right. They don't want to talk about it because it offends people. They don't want to tell people about their lives because it offends them. So what? You allow people to go to death when you don't tell them the truth. Ephesians 4.15. Tell people the truth in love. What it is is what it is. 
If it walked like a duck, if it talked like a duck, okay. if it quacked. Well, God thought that you might forget it, so he sent prophets to you to remind you. Yo, don't mix with those, because they're going to cause you to mix your faith. Yes, he don't you know certain people in and around there will cause you to mix your faith with untruth? Let me tell you something. You get a pure glass of water, pure glass of water, and you drop some dirt in it. What is that now? Huh? No, 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 no. The water's still pure, ain't it? No. What do you mean, no? You drop dirt in it. It's dirty. How did, but it's, it's, it's water, right? It's dirty water. It's dirty water. It's, dirty water. it's, dirty it's mud. It's, it's dirty it's water. It's mud, basically. Oh, okay. Mud. Yeah, you mix it not much. You got mud in it. So, 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 wait a minute. You would drink the pure water. Yes. But even though it's still water, you're not going to drink the what? No, stop. You know, if I, when I tell you, you're not going to drink that water with the dirt in it? No. You wouldn't either. Well, I don't understand that. So all the adults that mix, that mix the dirt in the pure water, what they got? Dirt. <laughs> all right. Gain more wisdom than all who were before me. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge. And I set my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is grasping for the wind. That's right. I've been fooled by some of the best people that come along, and I've been fooled by some of the worst. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that they have said the same thing about me. So just thinking you got understanding, and you got knowledge, and you got wisdom, you're going to play yourself like a sucker. Because <laughs> you can't figure them all out. But God, <laughs> God's discernment, I found out. Oh, he figured them all out. He t you can see him walking up to you, and he's categorizing them for you. And then in verse 18, for in much wisdom is much grief. You know sometimes you said to yourself, I wish I didn't know That's such right. and such right. about such and such. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on. Now that you, you wish you, the discernment from God has let you understand what that person is about. And later on in the quiet of night, you said to yourself, I wish I didn't know that about them. <laughs> now you got to handle that. Yes, yeah. sir. Hmm? And y'all sisters and brothers, y you, you understand fully what I mean. And it ain't just about the things, everyday things in life. Yo, it's about people. You wish you didn't know mm -hmm. that they had that in. You wish they hadn't said what they said because it gave you a greater insight into the wickedness that they carry in their spirit. Yeah. But Solomon has said, he who increases knowledge he who increases knowledge, you just do this thing for knowledge's sake, yo, you increase your sorrow. Believe me, the revelation of people is one of the most dangerous emotions you can carry around in your soul. Do you know what it is to look at people in the face and know that they're lying to you, and you bound by Almighty God not to reveal that you know that they're lying? Wow. And you got to give them anyway. I know. Huh? I remember telling my daddy, I said, I'm leaving that job at the airport eventually, and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and walk this. Well, what are you going to do that for? Like, that's a government job. I said, Daddy, because I've got a call. And my father looked at me and said, well, who called you? <laughs> <laughs> daddy, I didn't call you. Who called you? If I wasn't me, you At that point, I was like, Janet, I'm going to have to go see your mom. <laughs> wow, I said, That's my dad. I don't think he meant me no harm. He was just, just speaking. I'm trying to call you. I'm going to call you for what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see you. I'm, I'm just shaking my head. Stay in Ecclesiastes and go to his last book, which is book. Uh, which is in chapter 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. What verse? 13. No matter what, be, what you go through, no matter where you are in your understanding of things in life, you got to get a hold in the grip of this and understand this thing is bigger than you, bigger than all of us. It's bigger than the 7 billion people on the planet. It's bigger than them. And they just don't get it. That's all right. I hope they get it before that horn blows. 
but they don't get it. But any, no matter what you try, no matter where you go, no matter how much riches you attain, how much, understand what God is saying here. In verse 13, he says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Why do you think Christ spent so much time saying, thy faith has made thee whole? Come on, y'all adults. You want a fraction of a person? Huh? I stopped co-signing that Teddy Pendergrass song, not because I don't like the song. I'm talking about that 70 30. That's 60 40. Mm -hmm. That ain't a whole. Huh? When you're in a relationship, that ain't, I'm talking about she's giving 20% and I'm giving 80. Huh? Huh? That ain't whole. You don't want fractions in your relationship, do you? You want a whole person. No, you say you saying the words forever, or you buying with them, you committing to them, and you find that they only five, five, four, three fifths of a person. Wow. Like when the government had us down as two fifths of human. That's what you want, right? That's what you want. You want now? I got. Yeah, that's your. That's your. Oh, that's she. Yeah, now well, she ain't my whole girl because she only two fifths of a woman. She only two fifths of a woman. And then you wonder why he's looking for three fifths someplace else. Preach. Right now. Well. Preach. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't want to hear that. And when you tell it to them like that, they really don't want to hear it like that. But I'm only saying what the scripture said. Whole. Christ said, I've come to make you whole. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. All? All. All? All. All that rocket science stuff, all of that, and I understand that, you know, really, in the, because he is the creator of every form of mathematics, every mystical form or mystery form of electronics, because it was set there by his science and his understanding, he's not interested in what you bring to him. He's interested in that you keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. That's right. People think they're getting away from something. That's right. Oh, but that general, his very name, Proteus, I'm not going to tell you what it means, Google it and find out it's funny when you look at it. His very name. Yo, dude, you're a four star. This still came out? Yes. Ain't nothing hidden going to remain hidden. That's why you hear so much at them funerals. Mm, I ain't no granddaddy had that. You mean he had another wife on the other side of town? Mm, and those two children? Then some honor say, you know those are your cousins. Uh-uh! No, uh-uh! Grandma ain't know about it. Uh, Ma, do... Ma, shit! They ain't gonna recognize him. Uh, you, you, you can't deny the blood. Look at that boy over there look just like you. Hey, looking just like you. Only you the female version. He the male version with locks on his head and glasses and one earring. And somebody said, what? you know what? You know what? You need to stop. <laughs> I told you, yo, at daddy's funeral, yo, we kept changing the, we kept, had to change you, keep including people. That brother here, that brother there. Well, where that brother from? I remember my daddy telling my wife, yeah, yeah, I think never got a brother right here in the city. I don't know. I don't remember what his, what his man out there well or something. <laughs> you know, something. Yeah, yeah. I'm going, I'm going through all the majority of my life. People is telling me, yo, there's a dude, man, that just like you, sound like you too. Hmm? I'm saying, what? <laughs> Say, yeah. He ain't quite like you, but yo, he looks just like you. We, we saw him just the other day. We thought it was you. We called y'all ain't there. He just kept walking. <laughs> now, I'm, t yo, I'm telling you straight up. If I talk about your family, I'll talk about mine. Yo, this is, yo, this is, and, and it happened every day. And so we think that we're living in a complete knowledge and understanding of who we are and what we are. Oh, but when the truth come out, now they going mess us all up. Yeah, you see them kids walking inside there. Them uncle so-and-so kids. Uh-uh. Boy, that, that girl of Puerto Rican, don't she? <laughs> I, mm, now this side of the family mad. 
that side of the family over there angry. They don't want to go over there and talk. Yo, them people in sorrow too. Yeah. They ain't, they, the, the man that she loved, that was your daddy, that you, she still loved him. That's why she had them two all their kids by her. You know what, Nelma. Come on. She hurt too. She hurt you, you don't want to show her no love. Well, Sitting up there with, with our aunts and whatnot like this, with the, with the, with the Campbell funeral thing. Uh, <laughs> oh, you just wait. Uh, boy, when I get them, I got some words I'm going to uh, I know, uh, 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 you know when there's smoke, there's fire, girl. Thank uh, you. Uh, you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all know that. Hey, gee, what was that song with rap up here? But what was that? What was that movie they had with Chris Rock in it about his about his father? They went to bury the father. Come to find out that the the father was. Oh, yeah. death at a funeral. Yeah, death at a funeral. Had a little sugar in his shoes, oh, and it was the midget that went and told him because that was his. That was sick. That was crazy. But, <laughs> how you gonna find out that about your own dad? At the funeral. <laughs> how you handling that? Now, how now? Tell me, how you handling it? When you standing up in front of you, you got to say some words, and you looking down, but this information, the thing about Christ is, he already knew and forgave. We the only ones only holding on to that. We the only ones that want to hold on to that, like he gives us some empowerment. Don't give you no empowerment. You're going to be, the one thing that God gave you, oh, when you came into this faith before, if you put love into you. Why? Because you're going to find out some things about yourself first. And others, will you still love them? Because the greatest commandment is to love. And in this, what God will bring every work into judgment. So even when you're in this walk, you can't show no love. In the walk, you ain't got to walk. You're going to talk the talk Walk the walk, live the life. Boy. However, wouldn't you want to know more? Wouldn't you want some more of that type of blessing that comes from the ultimate provider? Brother was talking about Prime America. It provides a service. If I got an insurance policy, no human insurance policy can cover. And I, I, I dare anyone to check. Give me an insurance policy for eternity. You got one of those? Mm -hmm. That pay me through eternity. I ain't talking about, you know, uh, as Chris Rock said, a just-in-case insurance. That's what we pay. We pay for just-in-case. Right. Just in case you have an accident. Just in case you, when you die. Just in case you get sick. But many don't for years and years. And you still, all right, nothing to matter. But understand that you're paying for just in case. But show me one of those from Liberty. Show me one of those from Allstate. Show me one of those from around the world that's got an eternity clause in it and keeps on paying you after you long gone from here. I can show you mine. Show me yours. I can show you mine. Mine come right check. That's where it says, for all eternity, you covet. Blanket coverage. Ain't know what we call that, Gerard? Ain't uh, it, when, it's, when it's only uh, a temporary thing, you have a time limit on it, like 10 years of the insurance. You got that, that term. term it, ain't, this ain't no. If it, 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 it's any term on it, it's a long. It's a long. Eternity a long time. It's a long term insurance there. And what's the premium you pay? Your faith. And get this. That's the price that most people don't want to pay. Your faith. I'm going to walk in this until the cows come home. And when they get home, I'm going to walk a little further in it. But you got to believe beyond your belief. That's the thing we don't want to do. Hmm? You got to believe, belong. There, yes, last week when we started talking about discouragement, which I was going to talk about today until this came up, we, yo, you, you got so many discouragements going all around you. People, places, and things trying to discourage you from this. They ain't got nothing else to offer you. Everything else and any, everything else anybody else done brought to them is either not here or they can't do it themselves. As we were talking about the young man from the place, it's not, not just him, many of us. How many of them have worldly greatness according to the world, got money up the yank, live miserable lives? 
in the miserable lives. Now you think it's fun for, for a woman to have hundreds of men running through a yo, there ain't no fun with that. There ain't no fun with that. In the same way with men. You, th you think that's fun? Go to woman and 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 what have you achieved? You got 200 baby mamas and none of the kids know it. What fun is that? Hmm? Heard people talking about it. Once I was going through Hood in North Charlotte and uh, going over by St. Paul's and was talking to some kids over there and they were telling me, you know, you know the thing they always say, your passives don't make dollars, it don't make sense, you're a deuce with that. Yo, we that, we, we with that, but uh, you on these corners slinging. I remember being there. But what good is it if you profit the whole world and suffer the loss of your own soul? That's true. That's right. Where's your profit now? You're going you gonna to pay a price. And none of all these books was written because there's no price to be paid. They was written to, to, both as a reminder and as a warner. It's what you see because you upright. Because you upright, you walking around. Ask Steve Jobs, man, if he wouldn't trade one year, all of his money for one year in your life. Oh, you can't ask him. But he can't come back. Hmm? But he had all the money in the end. Money ain't going to save you. Education don't save you. All these relationships in and out, intermingling and whatnot. And those very kids that I was talking to saying, yo, Pastor, you know, yo, 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 you know, yeah, you, you speaking wise, man. We respect that wisdom and whatnot. But, um, you know, yo, we got to live. Dying ain't no way to live. And they don't see that they dying slow. Soft. It was a new movie out, but it was a song a long time by Roberta Flack. Killing me soft. They committing suicide. Soft. This kid that we was talking about on the football team committed it the hard way. But they committing it soft. And so when they're looking at things, they're not looking at it from the perspective of Almighty God. They're looking at it from the perspective that I got to. I, got, I, I get that. I get that. Biggie and them translated the struggle of the streets. And they translated what they were going through into a struggle. I wasn't thought like that before. They thought I was just a civil rights. Dude, you can't feed your family. That's a struggle. Huh? You going out day after day, going downtown, going to the labor ready and whatnot, they ain't got no job for you. You got to come back home to them hungry mouths. Dude, that's a struggle. And they were putting that in the text and in the verse and in the form in which they could clearly understand. This is a struggle we going through too because there's nothing left for us. And we'd rather die trying to attain something than hold on to what we don't believe and what we can't see. Ah, oh, my little young brother, I understand that I was there. I understand it. But because you have understanding of it, don't necessarily mean that it's right. Matter of fact, many of the things in which we have understanding of is wrong. That's why you can't always say, I know that's right. Sometimes you gotta speak up and say, I know that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it, and I know that's wrong. Huh? You gotta be forthright and upright and honest with yourself. And you gonna lie to, to, lie to the world if you want, don't be foolish enough to lie to yourself. You ever go to the mirror sometimes and you look, you weeping. There ain't nobody else around. You weeping. And you look up in the mirror and start weeping in the mirror. Boy, that's some face that you're looking at. That's some tears pouring out of your eyes, ripping all down your face. If you're women, the mascara is running or something. So now you ain't got them, them, them transparent tears, but you got tears mixed with the mask coming <laughs> down to your side. And you look up in, the, in, the, in that face right that's there. Oh, that's a scary face to look at right there. And for men, too. You think men don't weep with a certain ugliness. I ain't seen men weep with a macho weep. Ain't nobody weep with a... Then <laughs> <laughs> Therefore, he is an actor. <laughs> and that is what he is doing. Those, those who know the pain that has made you weep, you weep. And when you look up at that face right there, oh, that's a sorrowful face for you to see. That's a sorrowful face for you to look at right there. And then you look back at the scripture that says, the Sister Dana's famous scripture is, a favorite scripture is, Jesus wept. <laughs> Jesus wept. And you looked at that and you said, boy, he did that like, he did, yeah, 
Yeah. And inside that garden, yeah. What was he coming to? What we all have to come to. After you get all of this knowledge mm -hmm. and wisdom and understanding, mm -hmm. are you going to go in that garden and come out by saying, nevertheless, nevertheless. all what you said, and thought about God, all what you feel, all which you can compartmentalize, all which you can categorize, all which you can make straight here, all which you can put in a notch over here, all which you can look around and have your limited understanding of, you got that. And now you inside that garden wrestling with that. God could care less. He wanted to hear you say, nevertheless, not by my will. Amen. Your will be done. Your will. Be done. That's a, That's who. Who want to say that? Mm. Who, who? Come on. Our own arrogance and pride will not allow us to say that. Right. Even a man when he on his deathbed. Listen. The discouragement that you face come with everybody. Here go a man when when the saw read in, in the book of John. He's talking about John the Baptist. There came one who knew of this light. He wasn't the light, but he preached about it. Right. That's real common. That's, that's Yeshua's cousin. And yet, when he was in jail, oh, family, when he was in jail, when he was in jail, when he knew he was facing this, they knew he wasn't getting out of there no more. John, no, yo, ain't no, ain't no, no lawyer coming to bail you, John. He sent his disciples to say, go back and ask him, is he the one? Dude, You've been preaching this all your life. But at this hour and moment, you doubt. Why? Because it ain't coming the way in which you thought it was going to come, is it? You thought, that, you, what, you thought the heavens was really going to explode right there and the doors was going to bust open and that he, the angels was going to come and rest? John, it ain't happening like that. So in his hour of trouble, he said, are you the one? Ask him that. And Christ answered him like he does the world today. Not in the way in which you expect. He said, go back and tell John that the blind see, the deaf hear, the lame get up and walk, the lepers are cleansed. Because God, let me tell you something, family. I found it out the hard way. Don't you find it out that way? God is not really interested in what you think. Just what you do. Break it, it down. about what you think. Break it down. Kill us. But what you do, with now that you have this, now that you got this message, what you gonna do with it? Christ could have sent them back. Don't you remember the scriptures wherein it says that I will be born in Bethlehem. I will be of that. Those he could have said that. John would have understood that. John understood those scriptures. He didn't say that. He said, never mind. He said, go back and tell him what you see with your own eyes. And that's the thing that's important for all of you. You ain't got to go to this world with a great philosophy. Don't go with your great understanding. What he did for you. That's all they have. What do you see? What does the world see when they see you? And they, you say that you're walking in Christ. What they see with you? A pastor, you know, every now and then, man, they might see, you know, my hair undone. Easy fix. You could take Brother Charles' way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you ain't, you ain't got to deal with it no more. You can lock it up. Do it. Yo, yeah. You can die, fry it, lay it to the side. You do what you want. The world is not really interested in what your head looks like. Because it ain't what about what's on top of your head. And it ain't really about what's on top of your heart. This was inside that the world sees and will give testimony to your testimony. Never forget that woman that was blind as well. When she went to tell those child, because of her condition, because of who she was with those people there. Because they knew. Remember, Christ answered, and that's what people don't like. Christ answered you right where you are. He asked her, what about your husband? That's right. She could have lied. She ain't know who he was. Yeah. Well, my husband. But she thought about it. She said, I ain't, I ain't got no. He said, you're right. And those five others that you've been with ain't been your husband either. Yes, he true. called it like it is. He wasn't condemning her. He was telling her, yeah, I got that. And I'm willing to, that all that could be washed aside. What are you willing to do with this message now? She went back and told the people. The people told her, you know, 
when you told, first told us this, sin, they didn't say this, I'm adding it, this sinful, sorrowful, sorry woman that you are, available to every man in this town, have slept with him, we ain't going to listen to nothing you said. But they came out anyway. And then they told her, we didn't believe you at first. But now that we've seen with our own eyes, we give testimony that this is the woman. Jed and I were, were driving somewhere the other day and we drove past this cat that had on um, his Range Rover. I am the one. <laughs> yep. Now I don't know what type of context that he had, but my Cadillac roared, roared to life. But I couldn't catch that Range Rover. You understand, brother? <laughs> but I, I want to tell him to haul him at the light and say, dude, you got some form of arrogance there. Have on your license plate, I am the one. Now, he could have shouted back, that's my license plate, I have on it what I want to. But the arrogance of it, I know that I am, I know the true I am, you got this on your plate, I am the one. This is the sense of arrogance that people in the world have. Did you got to just understand it the way that it is. Ain't no. I'm looking at it now. My, my wife knows plainly, and still people that remember me in the round all of them. I remember when I walked around, my name was Davis. I knew most people in Harlem didn't understand that lie. And most did frown and didn't say nothing. But the word Davis means what? Huh? You find him in all forms? Knew a brother one time in the arts and the martial arts. His name was Kareem Allah. Dude, you named yourself Kareem Allah? Until he lost a fight. Then the rest of the world was like, because you Allah, you can't lose, lose a fight. And Charles, guess who you lost it to? No, I don't even say it. You don't even want to know. But that's all right. They really turned their back on them there. But the sense of who we are, believe in ourselves, overshadows sometimes our brain telling us, now you know full well, you ain't about that, and you ain't about this, okay. and you, did, you ain't about that. Right. And that is, that is that, in, in talking, you talk about the spirit man talking to you, we talk about the spirit man, and yeah, now the spirit man, the spirit woman is talking to you, and guess what, you're trying to shut them up. Mm -hmm. But I found it very difficult to turn down the noises in your own head when you control the volume button and you don't want the music to stop. You hit that replay button over and over and over again. Because you like the sound of your own thoughts and your own words. We all do. Recognize. But then recognize as followers of the one true living God what others who don't have what you have are going through. And what they're going through is the very thing that Christ came to heal. But they want the healing. They don't want the healer. That's right. They want the prescription. They don't want the doctor. They want the way. They don't want the guy. They want the riches. They don't want the provider. That's why they treat God like a Burger King God. They just want to have it their way. And God got a problem with that. And we should have a problem with that. And that's why we shouldn't be afraid to stand up on this truth. You won't get what Brother Gerard got if you ain't got it yet. On your job, where you go, you go get it. They gonna plot against you. So what? So what? We've been in battles for everybody else. You've been in political battles. You've been in civil battles. You've been in personal battles. You've been in, you've been in the battle for the true and the living God. That's the greatest testimony of service you can ever give. Yeah. And I fought on all fronts of this world. All fronts, military and every other front. And the fronts that I brought up, all fronts. I ain't never found a battle greater than this to be in. Okay. And the very fact that not everybody can do it makes me throw my shoulders back and walk greater with pride. Pride in the true and the living God, the one who freed me. Hmm? You understand what I'm saying? I've read books until 
my eyes, my eyes were just open from staring. And that's not what brings you to the, to the true and the living God. All that knowledge, wisdom, it does what for you? Can weary you. As a matter of fact, and just to end this, hold on. Turn to the... Um, Ecclesiastes. Thank you, sister. Ecclesiastes. Everybody know where that's at? Well, find it the way I told you to find it, boys. You know where to go to. Can't find Ecclesiastes. I know y'all can find it. Y'all are humble birds. Y'all can find it. Chapter 1. Sister Maria, we went to the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 1, verse 18. Will you get me to read that, please? Verse 18. Yes, ma'am. 